The Anti-Cruelty Society is a Chicago-based, not-for-profit organization that has helped save the lives of cats and dogs in the city for 110 years. Unfortunately, the Anti-Cruelty Society doesn't have the resources or the manpower to help everyone looking for help with their pets during these economically trying times. Still, more and more citizens are opting for adoption instead of paying premium for progress. Is partly this bad economy drawing you towards coming here as opposed to paying for an expensive lap dog? Right, right. Because right. I noticed this dog just if you buy from a pet store, it's around about five or six hundred. So that I've been looking at, making life choices, Great. finding ways to save money. So. Uh, well, it's very humanitarian to come here. Mm -hmm. It's less expensive. Uh, this is my visit that was prompted by the rescue of those 67 dogs, and most of them were small, which is what I wanted. Hmm. So, um, I want a dog. I had a dog. Mm -hmm. My dog died two years ago. And, and, my, and my husband died, and my daughter went to study out of state. So, it would be a wonderful companion for me. So, my name is Elliot Serrano. I'm a community outreach specialist here for the Anti Cruelty Society. And I'm 41 years old. I will be 42 in May. I've been doing this for a long time. You know, I, I know the ins and outs of this place pretty much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's almost like a religion. You know, golly, I've been doing this since, since I was your age. And uh, I always say animal welfare, you don't choose it. It chooses you. So people who first get into this, you either wash out right away because it's too intense or demands too much or just more than you can really handle or you're stuck in it for life, like the mafia. First, so you know, we are a private organization, so we're, we're not not-for-profit charity. Okay. We don't get any state, city, or federal funds. Uh, we essentially exist on the goodwill of our community. Mm -hmm. And we've been very fortunate that for 110 years, people think we're important enough to support. And like, I mean, you said that, you know, you've, your company is to support you know, everyone. Mm -hmm. Have you have you noticed that, you know, with the economy the way it is, more people are coming in to use your services that are low income clinic. Yeah. You know, at this point we probably have more clientele than we can handle. And there are folks that want to get into our clinic that are on waiting lists. They can't get in right now because we just can't handle the workload. Um, we can only take, realistically, only care for so many clients and we can only qualify so many people. And then, of course, you have the folks who, you know, who are finding themselves in dire straits, you know, financially and they have to make the decision whether they can continue to keep the pet or um, force them, you know, find themselves forced. They have to give up that family, you know, that member of their family so that they can support, you know, the, the kids. And you mentioned earlier that you saw less of a effect from the economy by, on the actual animal front, more on the on the donors. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, th that's where you saw the hit. Yeah, I mean, that's where you saw it. Uh, comp you know, corporations just don't have that extra money to give. Um, people don't have that extra money to give. Yeah, no, that was the most that was the most dramatic.